What if I told you that a narrow strip of water could change the course of a world war? This is not a hypothetical scenario, but the stark reality of the Dardanelles campaign during the First World War, a crucial chapter in the annals of warfare that we are about to delve into. The Dardanelles Straits, a slender 41-mile-long waterway that serves as a gateway between the Mediterranean Sea, the Sea of Marmara, and further north, the Black Sea, was the stage for this incredible military operation. Its strategic importance cannot be overstated, as controlling this passage could potentially alter the balance of power in the war. In February 1915, the Royal Navy, the French Marine Nationale, the Imperial Russian Navy, and the Royal Australian Navy embarked on a formidable mission to force their way through these straits. Their opponents were none other than the formidable forces of the Ottoman Empire, who were determined to defend their homeland and the crucial waterway. What these Allied forces encountered, however, was far from a straightforward naval battle. The Ottomans, with their astute use of naval mines, turned the Dardanelles into a deadly maze of explosive traps. The narrowness of the straits, coupled with these hidden threats, made navigation a perilous task. The Allies' imposing armada soon found itself in a precarious situation. Faced with unexpected resistance, the Allies were forced to rethink their strategy. The Gallipoli campaign was born out of this necessity, a daring land invasion aimed at eliminating the Ottoman artillery along the straits. This would allow the Allied forces to resume their naval operations and hopefully achieve their objective. The story of the Dardanelles campaign is more than a tale of naval warfare. It's a testament to strategic ingenuity, tenacity and the unpredictability of war. It's a saga that demonstrates how even the mightiest forces can be thwarted by clever tactics and the unforgiving nature of geography. As we delve deeper, let's explore how a seemingly simple naval operation turned into a year-long struggle. What lessons can we draw from the enigma of the Dardanelles? What does this pivotal chapter in history tell us about the nature of warfare, the importance of strategy, and the unpredictable elements that can shape the outcome of a conflict? Stay tuned as we navigate through the fascinating waters of the Dardanelles campaign. The year is 1915, and the great powers of the world are locked in a deadly conflict. The First World War was in full swing, and amidst this global turmoil, a significant naval campaign was about to unfold in the narrow, 41-mile-long Dardanelles Strait. The Royal Navy, the French Marine Nationale, the Imperial Russian Navy, and the Royal Australian Navy, all part of the Allied forces, embarked on a daring mission. Their aim? To force a passage through the Dardanelles Straits, a crucial waterway connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Sea of Marmara and the Black Sea further north. This was not a mere geographical manoeuvre, it was a strategic move, a bold attempt to gain control of a critical route and deal a decisive blow to the Ottoman Empire. But the Ottomans were not to be underestimated. They stood guard over their territory, steadfast and determined. The waters of the Dardanelles were their stronghold, and they were ready to defend it with everything they had. The strait, while narrow, was heavily fortified, and the Ottomans had an arsenal of resources at their disposal. The most formidable among these were the naval mines, silent but deadly, lurking beneath the water's surface, ready to strike at any moment. The Allies' initial operations were met with staunch resistance. The Ottomans, well aware of the strategic importance of the strait, fought back with tenacity. The narrow waterway, once seen as an opportunity by the Allied forces, quickly became a battlefield. The Dardanelles were not just a passage to be forced open, but a gauntlet to be run. As the battle raged on, the Allies found themselves in a difficult predicament. The Straits were proving to be a tougher challenge than they had anticipated. The Ottomans, on the other hand, were proving to be formidable opponents, executing their defence strategies with precision and resolve. Little did the Allies know this was just the beginning of their troubles. The opening salvo had been fired, and the stage was set for a struggle that would test their mettle, challenge their strategies, and forever change the course of the war. The real enemy lay beneath the surface, unseen and deadly. 
The Dardanelles Campaign, an audacious naval operation against the Ottoman Empire during the First World War, faced a formidable challenge that wasn't immediately apparent. The Ottomans had a secret weapon, one that lay beneath the waves of the Dardanelles Strait, silently waiting to unleash its devastating power. These were the naval mines, not the most glamorous of weapons perhaps, but their impact was profound and far-reaching. These hidden threats, lurking unseen beneath the water's surface, were instrumental in the Ottomans' defence strategy. The mines were not a new concept in warfare. They had been used in conflicts previously, but their deployment in the Dardanelles Strait was a game-changer. The narrow, 41-mile-long waterway was already a formidable natural obstacle, its treacherous currents and strong winds making navigation a challenge. With the addition of these hidden explosives, the strait became a veritable death trap. The mines were strategically placed, their locations carefully chosen to inflict maximum damage on the Allied forces. The Royal Navy, the French Marine Nationale, the Imperial Russian Navy and the Royal Australian Navy were all caught off guard. They were expecting a conventional naval battle, but what they encountered was a deadly underwater minefield. The result was catastrophic. The mines caused extensive damage to the Allied fleet, sinking several ships and severely damaging others. The loss of life was considerable, but perhaps even more significant was the psychological impact. The mines instilled a deep-seated fear in the sailors, a fear that every wave could conceal a deadly threat. The Ottoman Empire had turned the tables on the Allies. Their naval superiority, their state-of-the-art warships, their seasoned sailors all seemed powerless against the simple, unassuming naval mine. The hidden threat beneath the waves had achieved what the Ottoman artillery could not. It had halted the Allied advance and thrown their plans into disarray. With their plans in disarray, the Allies were forced to rethink their strategy. The naval mines had changed the course of the Dardanelles campaign, proving that sometimes the most effective weapon is the one you don't see coming. When the sea turns against you, sometimes the only option is to take to the land. With the Dardanelles Straits proving a formidable barrier, the Allies found themselves in need of a new strategy. The sea, once a trusted ally, had become a treacherous enemy, and the land offered a new path to victory. Enter the Gallipoli Campaign. Launched in April of 1915, this ambitious land invasion aimed to eliminate the Ottoman artillery along the Straits. This was no easy task. The Gallipoli Peninsula was fortified with a network of trenches and defences manned by Ottoman troops ready to defend their homeland. The Allies, however, were not to be deterred. The British, French and their allies, including troops from Australia and New Zealand, landed on the beaches of Gallipoli with a singular focus – eliminate the Ottoman artillery and clear the way for the naval fleet. The initial landings, however, were met with fierce resistance. The terrain was difficult, the weather unforgiving and the Ottoman forces relentless. Yet the Allies pressed on, driven by the belief that victory was within their grasp. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, as the battle for Gallipoli raged on. The Allies launched attack after attack, each time hoping to break through the Ottoman defences. But the Ottomans were equally determined, holding their ground against the onslaught. In the face of such resistance, the Allies started to realise the enormity of their task. The Gallipoli campaign, initially seen as a swift route to victory, was turning into a protracted and bloody battle. The cost, both in terms of lives lost and resources expended, was staggering. It's worth noting that the Gallipoli campaign, for all its hardship and loss, was a significant event in the First World War. It marked a shift in tactics, a move from naval to land warfare, in a bid to break the deadlock in the Dardanelles. But, as the Allies would soon discover, this change in strategy did not guarantee success. But even on land, victory was far from assured. As 1916 dawned, the Allies made one last desperate attempt to break through. The stakes had never been higher. The Dardanelles campaign, a daring naval assault against the Ottoman Empire, had reached its climax. The Allies, a coalition of the Royal Navy, French Marine Nationale, Imperial Russian Navy and the Royal Australian Navy, had one objective, to force a passage through the Dardanelles Straits. 
This narrow, 41-mile-long waterway was the only conduit between the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea to the north. Its strategic importance was immense, but the Ottomans, who had held the strait since the 15th century, were not about to give it up without a fight. They had already repelled several attempts to breach their defences, mainly through the use of naval mines. Now, as the winter winds swept across the straits, the Allies launched their final operations. But despite the Allies' best efforts, their plans were thwarted. The Ottoman defenders proved to be too strong, their resolve too unyielding. The Allies' final operations ended in failure, their hopes of a breakthrough dashed on the rocks of the Dardanelles. The impact of this failure was felt far beyond the shores of the Straits. It marked a turning point in the First World War, a moment when the balance of power began to shift away from the Allies. The Dardanelles campaign, which had begun with such high hopes and lofty ambitions, ended in disappointment and defeat. But the legacy of the campaign lived on. It became a symbol of the power of resistance, a reminder of the unpredictability of war. It showed that even the mightiest of armies could be brought to a standstill by a determined and resourceful opponent. In the end, the Dardanelles proved to be an insurmountable obstacle, a testament to the power of resistance and the unpredictability of war. The Dardanelles campaign was over, but its memory would linger, a haunting echo of the trials and tribulations of war.